Hello, I'm Epia Extra Cat and welcome back to the video. So you might recall how a few years ago I did something called YouTube Comments Build a House. This was a project where I simply asked people to leave two details in a comment down below a video, one of which was a position and the second of which was a block. I figured that people would use this as an opportunity to work together to kind of crowdsource a house, but long story short, that didn't happen in the slightest. In fact, no one really worked together on anything. The only cooperation we did see is that someone placed a redstone block and then someone placed a TNT block next to it. I guess that was kind of exciting because it's the only detail here that doesn't look like it was entirely randomly placed by a computer. We just have a thousand blocks all over the world and they don't really look like a house. So I figured let's try this again. A few weeks later I did Twitter comments build a house and I figured okay reply to this tweet uh, 20 by 20 area and also please work together. So I asked people to work together and what happened is people kind of tried to work together to build a wither. I mean they did a bad job but still you can see how there's like some blocks nearby each other but it's not a house and I just realized you know people cannot build a house together. Too many chefs really does ruin the broth and that's why I wanted to pose today's question which is what is better? A thousand humans building a house or maybe instead one robot? I have every single Minecraft block here. What if we used a RNG algorithm to place the blocks in a 10 by 10 area and see uh, for sure if we can make a better house using entirely randomly block placement than we can with people actually trying. So let's start by explaining which blocks might be included in this random number generator house. So yeah this is all of the blocks alphabetically listed that might be featured in the RNG house. As you can see we've got a pretty big variety, most of the major Minecraft blocks plus a few you might not consider such as stairs and command blocks and so on and so forth but the key thing to note is we have 219 separate blocks. The reason that's key information is because there's lots of ways we could randomly make a house and I'm sure you have a few ideas of your own if you're into this sort of thing but I want to make this nice and easily repeatable with very little at your disposal so I'm just using a random.org true random number to work this one out. The re uh, It's the closest to true random as you can get on the internet by the way but basically I'm using Using this because this can give us all of the information in one simple number. One random number can give us everything we need if we assign every single block a value between 0 and 218. So this is block 0, block 1, block 2, block 3, block 4, block 5, etc. All the way down to 218 on my spreadsheet like I've got right here. Then we can uh, now uh, use the first three digits of this big number to work out which uh, block we'll be using and then the next three digits can work out where it'll go. So first three digits say block number 125 and then the next three digits 113 indicate it should go at x1, y1, and then z3. Uh, z so yeah, we've got a 10 by 10 by 10 area, which is going from 0 to 9, 0 to 9, and 0 to 9 in all three directions. And that's where we're placing all of the blocks as this goes on. So yeah, this is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, I hope that explains things simply. Let's get straight into it with our first example. And actually, let's just place uh, this one, shall we? Because block 125 is the moss stone, or mossy cobblestone, whichever way you want to refer to it as, it's just called moss stone and bedrock for, for reasons. Uh, so that means we want to place this at Y1. We're going to account Y0 as being in the ground for this purpose. So we're going to be going all the way to X1, which is over here. Y1 is on the surface. And then Z3, which means if this is 0, this is 1, this is 2, this is 3, and that's where it's going to go. This is our first randomly uh, generated block. And what we're going to do to make this kind of also fun is we have, uh, you know, my editors in the game, and we should be able to also show this off in kind of third person. So the rest of this video is going to be entirely done in visibility. It, it's, it's going to be kind of interesting in my opinion. So our second block and position is 110 in Y9 and then 88. So we've got a pretty rough second placement block because that's going to place it somewhere in the sky up here. And if I'm being entirely honest with you, I don't think this looks particularly great so far, so just make sure this is right. Um, oh, it's actually one block too high. Uh, but yeah, so so far, it's starting to look a bit like YouTube Comments Build a House, but I think that just over time, the sheer mathematics of averages should lead to most of this eventually making something resembling a house. At least I'm really praying that happens sooner. So I'm really torn how to feel about this next number. It's 13777. You know, 7 is very, very, very uh, lucky, and 13 as the diamond block is lucky, but it's also an unlucky number, so... How am I meant to feel about that? I'm not entirely sure. That diamond block does synergize well with that stair we have next to it. So, <laughs> yeah. So here's a pretty cool occasion. We have our first block that if we try to place it in its correct location, i.e., you know, 381 or, you know, if we try to place it at Y8, it's going to fall right down. So we'll just save the effort and place it right here, which, as you can see, does something nice. We've got, like, a house area starting to form, I think. This is going good places. So I just realized something I should do, it will protect the video you'll see later, is I'm going to use barrier blocks to help place my uh, blocks at the top here, so that way it looks like they're placed on nothing, and then I destroy those later. Oh, the particle effects. Probably ruin everything. But yeah, we're going to do that just to place the blocks without placing a big tower, which hopefully you'll appreciate when you see the magical video of this all coming together later, assuming that does happen. Who knows how videos work, honestly, at this point. 
So I know this is true random, and true random creates things that humans see as patterns, that's why we don't see them as random, but look how many blocks have ended up at one or zero, compared to only four blocks in the sky. Like, statistically, most of these blocks should be somewhat in the air, but we're starting to get the base of what might be a beautiful house, I think. The real problem with true random as a concept is that the moment you try to start to think about it, you realize that like, oh, yeah, so what what is true random? And then you're like, well, is the universe predetermined or not? And because that's an unanswerable question, you can't really answer if there's such thing as true random, because the word random doesn't really work in that context. But that opens up a whole nother wormhole that we're going to try and avoid for today, while we just generate a new number. Oh, was it random or was it not? But the truth is, none of these numbers are particularly special, even cyan concrete. It's a good reliable block that we have in powder form right here, but uh, it doesn't make it any less random or more special or anything. It's like looking at the number of glazed terracotta blocks we've got so far, which I think is three separate ones, your mind is like, oh, is the, is the algorithm favoring that? Nope, it's purely a random number generator. <laughs> it can't have favorite Minecraft blocks. And if it did have favorite Minecraft blocks, it wouldn't pick the dead horn, which is block number 63. No one picks the dead horn block if they have a choice. So we actually have our first duplicate block right here. It is a second light uh, gray glazed terracotta. We already have a lot of glazed terracotta, but we specifically have a light gray glazed terracotta just over there. We've got two of the same block. What a spooky coincidence. I'm, I'm gonna stop making fun of probability now. I'm gonna be honest, we're getting a pretty bad series of blocks right now. There's a lot of blocks kind of floating around in the middle, which is kind of creating a ceiling in some ways, you could argue, maybe. The problem with having TNT in a house, in my opinion, is the fact that, like, no one ever actually does that because we all know, like, if you play any amount of multiplayer ever, you know immediately what's going to happen. Like, seconds after you place the TNT, someone's going to use it as an easy way to blow up your house. So even though this is a pretty much solo world, I mean, besides the recording, I mean, it, it still makes me uneasy that someone's going to come in here and just blow it up, so I've got my eyes on the TNT. Interestingly, I actually just got Dark Prospering Stairs to place there, and then we had some to place right here, on the same level on both X and Y. That's a crazy suspicion. Like, we got two numbers within a few, like, numbers off each other. Which, again, it's meant to happen, but it's still weird when it happens, right? And they think to themselves, like, okay, well, you know, there's a 99% chance I won't die, I guess I'll be fine. But that's not really how the statistics meant to work. It's not like a, you're rolling a dice or you've got a 100-sided thing you've got to flip. What it is, is, you know, like, there is a 1 in 100 chance that people die because 1 in 100 people don't come back alive. But that's usually for a whole host of different reasons, you know? Like, different people are at different levels of risk. It's like how, you know, just because, you know, 1% of humans die a year or something, it doesn't mean there's a 1% chance you're going to die in the next year. Although, maybe it does, depending on your conditions. Because most statistics to do with humans are very generalized, you know? You can't uh, just call one person out in particular. So you kind of have to do a little bit of generalization, at least. And that's something I guess we don't realize. That, like, your con your specifics of your human condition are very different to everyone else's. And that's awesome in a lot of ways but it also means that there's no reliable statistics on if you'll die or if you'll live or anything else like that because they they really are just generalizing the rest of the factors you know we have true random in minecraft or in uh, you know random numbers because it's simple it's just like oh yeah you you literally like spinning a thing there's a one in ten chance each number comes up but or one in two hundred and eighteen thousand nine hundred ninety nine chance that something comes up but um you know like when it comes to real life uh, there aren't random numbers running in the background as fun as that would be though right one of my favorite quotes regarding this, that's actually one of the biggest reasons Einstein was wrong, but it is an Einstein quote, so you can feel really smart for knowing it, is that God doesn't play dice. When, as it turns out, like, that's like, one of our beliefs right now is that God does play dice, or whatever, you know, like, however you believe how the universe works, there is like a fundamental, like, chance-based mechanic in there. But, uh, yeah, Einstein believed it, so why, why don't you believe it too? So now, this is, this is a fun thing, by the way, just to interrupt myself, there is now some bone in the ground, like, hidden in underneath stuff. No one's ever gonna see that bone, probably, unless something else comes to light. But yeah, there's bone in the garden. And how many people last time put bones in the garden? None. The generous AI has even decided to give us a furnace, which you do need in a Minecraft house. Uh, sadly, however, the AI has deemed it necessary that the furnace be eight blocks in the sky, which, <laughs> I mean, like, it's a bit higher than I usually put my furnaces, if I'm being entirely honest. Oh, we could just place it up there. A bit higher than I usually go, but, you know, fortunately enough, the, the game, that the robot had thought about that, because as you can see, we've got a nice little staircase leading up to it. Look how beautiful this house is already. It can only get better from here, though, I reckon. You can actually see some patterns starting to emerge, way more than either of the previous ones. You can see stuff going with each other, and that's the crazy thing about 
Again, when you have people doing stuff, it's random but in a controlled, a bad controlled way apparently. But true random is actually giving some pretty intriguing results so far. So here's another way that humans don't understand chance, and I'll tell this story whenever chance comes up, because I'm still bitter about it, by the way. But um, once uh, my science teacher did an experiment back when I was in school, I had to be like, okay, we're going to try and do some random to prove how random the world is, but yet how it doesn't produce 50-50 results until you do a big enough sample size. So it was like, okay, flip a coin five times yourself, and you'd, or like ten times yourself, you'd always get like six heads, four tails, something along those lines. But when uh, he got the entire class to flip the coins 20 times each, the idea was it'd be 50-50, or more or less that. Uh, but interestingly enough, my coin landed on its side, and I, I, I was like, look, you gotta, you know, like, he only had heads and tails boxes, so I was like, look, Mr. I can remember his name, it's a really long name. Uh, you, you've gotta see this, this is the craziest thing, it landed on its side, and it just came over, and it was like, no it didn't, that, that never happens. Uh, you know, like, which side did it land on? And I was like, it landed on its side, and he's like, if you really insist on saying that, just re-roll it. And it's like, no, this is a rare event. I got it to land on its side. How are you not believing that? That is the most amazing event, at least to me it was. And uh, yeah, still bitter about that because it's like he didn't believe the amazing uh, accuracy we saw. But yeah, fun fact about Toy Cat. I once, roll I once flipped a coin and it landed on the side. And it's such an absurdly unlikely thing, but it makes a coin a really bad D2, by the way. In most games... Uh, when you're using a coin as like a flipper, like Pokemon or, uh, you know, D&D for instance, if it lands on its side, you just have to reroll because, again, it's it's so unlikely that it's not really considered, but it is a real possibility. You always have to have that in your rules that you should reroll. Or people start to riot, and it's, it's not good for anyone when people riot. So we just got block number three, which again, super rare to go that down the numbers, which is actually a beacon. So there's some chance, it's very, very, very small, that this magically comes together and actually makes a powered beacon. I really don't think it will happen, and I think being hopeful of happening is maybe wishful thinking. So there's a couple of tiny mistakes I realized while making this. The first one is the fact that I actually put one block too many in the RNG thing. There's 218 blocks, which means it's 217. So I have uh, 218 as block delete block, so there's a, a difference you might spot between what I say and what's in the video, originally at least. Uh, but the other thing, uh, by the way, whenever it's uh, at, like free like this, we can just place it there and it just kind of stays there. But the other thing is that if I really wanted to, it might be easier to use commands and just like make the things happen that way. So we'll try that for a bit, just because it's kind of interesting. So the next block is black wolf, for instance. So all we have to do is set block, and then the, the coordinates are 889. So 8, oh wait, it's, uh, it's reverse, so 988. Oh, this is actually a good example of one that doesn't work because black wool doesn't get placed that way. We'll try this again. But yeah, I also realized that we could just use the set block command to maybe do this a little bit faster, but it would involve more typing. And again, I'm sure there's some automated way to set this up. But if you're not on somewhere where you can automatically do that, then we'll do this the, the manual way because it does make for a nicer thing at the end, I think. Or maybe not. Maybe this is all in vain. So another pretty key mistake I've just realized that might hinder this ever becoming a real house is that crafting table is missing from the list of blocks. Maybe that's the 219th block that should be delete. Maybe that's what it is. But either way, uh, the house is a little bit flawed, but I'm going to keep powering through it. So the very last block we're going to be placing is going to be a polished diorite block, which we're going to be placing in, uh, you know, X2, which is just over here. Uh, it's going to be Y0, which is a bit of a weird one, and it's going to be x5 so that means it's going to be uh based on one two three four five just under here which conveniently enough i can get to okay we're gonna have to replace that but as you can see this is every single block now placed for the purpose of the rng challenge it's just over an hour of placing blocks again i know there are some fun ways we could have automatically done this but i think seeing it be created block by block was kind of an experience uh, if i'm being honest the experience of, you know, doing YouTube comments about a house where I built every single block, reading the comments one by one, and doing this one by one where I read the coordinates, placed them one by one, was pretty darn similar. However, I will say the process of making this one was a little bit more fun because sometimes there'd be a fun pattern just by pure chance. And that is why I would say, again, let's, let's, let me show you the whole process on screen right now uh, from start to finish, the time lapse, if you will. Um, again, if you look at the whole thing, you can start to see every now and then there's something that looks like a pattern. You can see there's a bunch of blue box that just happen to be together. There's a bunch of gray that comes together. There are some things that kind of make a ceiling. 
And I think for that reason, maybe it's just because of the more constrained, uh, you know, geography of being 10 by 10 by 10. But I think, you know, looking at this, it's significantly more interesting. I think it failed. I think I was expecting like a house of some sort with actual walls, maybe holes with walls, uh, walls with holes in, but at least something resembling a house. But in this case, we have something that resembles, again, just a big mess, but it's better than either the YouTube comments make a house by a long shot, in my opinion. Again, look at this. It's just blocks in the sky. And it's even better, in my opinion, than this right here. You can see looking at the Again, all the blocks, like there's something structural in the center maybe, but in this case, the entire 10 by 10 plot, if we go back to it, which by the way, uh, this is me trying to make it by myself. If you haven't seen that video, wouldn't recommend checking it out. It's terrible, but looking at the uh, RNG house, uh, you can see how like, oh yeah, there's some patterns going on here. And because of that, as always, whenever a bad house is made, we have to do Toy Cat's house tour. So I'm gonna destroy the walls around it just to make it a bit clearer. So hello, I'm IBX Toy Cat and welcome back to House Tours with Toy Cat, the series I run on my channel where I show you Minecraft houses and I, you know, let you know whether they're worth building or not, or, you know, maybe, uh, you know, give you some design tips for your own houses. And today I have a house which comes in from Mr. RNG. I don't know if that's like his initials or what, but he has this um, wonderful, uh, you know, design principle, which he likes to call uh, building it entirely randomly. So the beauty of this house right here is you can see, looking into it, it flips all the traditional Minecraft building principles on their head. Every single philosophy you've heard about having walls or a ceiling or a crafting table or furniture or doors to the house, they've all been flipped on your head. Why do you need doors, man? Like, are you trying to keep the outside world out? Why not be a bit more open? And that's why the entranceway, as you can see, is a moss cobblestone block on one side and a concrete pad on the other. And then that takes you into the living room. The living room is an absolute delight. Again, it raises the question, if we like Minecraft stairs and our builds so much, why don't we just put them right in our living room? And as you can see, there's a seat right here. You can't probably sit on it, but it kind of looks like one, right? A, a little bit, I would say. So that's that's a delight by itself too. Uh, as, as you can see, I, I guess we can stand on that. There's also this right here, which doubles as both the sofa for the house, and this is our TV, I guess, uh, and it also doubles as the way to access the second floor. So here's the beauty. Minecraft stairs in regular houses, they're too easy. Like, let's be honest, we're playing Minecraft, we're parkour gods, we can do something a bit more interesting. So when you want to access the second floor of this house, what you have to do is you do a little bit of parkour and you have to, you know, kind of work out the way yourself. It's a bit confusing, but again, you've got to use your brain. You know, did you know that if you don't use your brain, it eventually dies? That's probably a true fact. So this house forces you to use your brain if you want to find something like the furnace. Or if you want diamonds, rather than putting them in a chest, here they are underneath the furnace. You mine the block and then you get yourself nine diamonds. The house is a real modern masterpiece. The beacon being the only light source. Again, love it. It's beautiful. Uh, the fact that we've got so much blue in there, but only one light source, which is a beacon, really raises some questions, but that's a thing. And here's the best bit, right? You know how every Minecraft house, you make it at least a little bit safe against griefing. In this case, you invite the griefers in. You say, okay, griefers, you think you've got something to challenge me? I don't think you've got this. And then you show them the TNT and they're like, oh, I don't, don't know what to do about that. Like, how can you grief a house that's already got TNT in it? And yeah, the I, I just think the, the, the multiple layers of beauty here, the dropper that has absolutely nothing attached to it, the fact that there's random bones buried in it. <laughs> I think there's, yeah, there's still a random bone there. That is what makes this house an absolute beauty, an absolute delight to look at. And uh, yeah, this is uh, currently on sale. If you just, uh, you know, send $5 uh, in an unmarked envelope to your nearest, I guess, bin, uh, then it'll eventually end up at the owner of this house and you too can own a house that's delightful. So I'll be doing a building guide. Actually, wait, this whole video is a building guide. Uh, the whole, the, the time lapse of it being built. That's your building guide. If you want to make a house as beautiful as this, now you know how to. However, before we go more seriously, I do want to ask the, the pretty big question. And that pretty big question is going to be, what do you think of uh, this house versus the YouTube one? So the the big question I pose at the start of the video is what's better? A thousand, you know, people? So, you know, what is it, is it, does too many chefs ruin the broth? Or is a robot better? Who, you know, who, or to put this in the meme format, who would win uh, 1,000 humans trying to work together or one big computer generated algorithm? That's the question uh, you have to, I guess it's a small computer generated algorithm, but that, that's the question I'd like for you to answer in the comments down below, because personally, I do like this house more. There's a human element to this, and you know, maybe I just don't like people enough, but I don't like the human element very much in this at all. I think the human element is what detracts from this, whereas the true RNGness of this is what makes it a genius 
a build, in my opinion. An R ingenious build. It's it's whatever. I'm puns, you know. Anyway, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you did all enjoy it. Uh, big thank you to the editor again. He's been here this whole time. I think he's uh, like eating a snack or something. Uh, it's it's quite a long snack. It's been an hour and forty minutes. But he's been here uh, helping me out just to get those nice panoramas at the end. Uh, so big thank you as always. Uh, if you don't know, uh, some of the more longer and more complex videos. Uh, uh, my good friend uh, Cameron does edit, so yeah, if you're curious about that, why there's a bear in the corner, that's the reason for that. Big thank to him, big thank you for watching. Uh, like if you liked it, share if you liked it, turn on those notifications if you want to see more of these videos, because I upload every single day on my channel, and sometimes I learn that people in RNG are just as bad at making houses. But yeah, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Goodbye.